kindly let me know what I can do to win you back over because I really want to go back to the days of uh, sort of early 2014 where I'd upload a video and there'd be 2,000 comments. On the 16th of October 2016, a video was uploaded to the YouTube platform titled My Channel Is Dead. The video was uploaded by a creator who a few years previously had almost the opposite of a dead channel. A creator that we all know and love, Bajan Canadian. The video addressed an issue that many other Minecraft YouTubers were facing at that point in time, a seemingly unstoppable decline in views. Between early 2014 and 2020, Bajan Canadian has gone from getting approximately 60 million views per month to around 1 million views per month, a drop of around 95% resulting in almost total irrelevancy. But how could such a decline occur? Was it the fact that Beijing Canadian consistently displayed low status behavior by almost begging his audience to watch his videos? I want to turn this thing around and I can't do it without the help of all my family out there, my dudes, I need you right now more than ever. Or was it the fact that Beijing Canadian just couldn't keep up with the changing YouTube landscape over time? Welcome back to the Downfall series boys, in this episode we'll be looking at the Downfall full of Michus, aka Beijing Canadian. The Beijing Canadian YouTube channel was created on the 4th of March 2010. But wait, was this really where Beijing Canadian started? On the official Beijing Canadian YouTube channel? Well, as it turns out, no. Beijing Canadian, or Mitch Hughes as he's known to those close to him, actually began his YouTube endeavors way back in early 2009 on a channel called Awesome Source Films. Awesome Source Films was a channel created by the now incredibly popular YouTuber Jerome ASF. And since branding or personality wasn't as important back then as it is now, Jerome decided to let some of his school friends upload their own videos to the channel. One of these friends was his good school friend Mitch, aka Beijing Canadian. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch, or Beijing Canadian here from Awesome Sauce Films. Mitch's first YouTube appearance was not with Minecraft or Call of Duty or even a vlog for that matter. It was actually with the game RuneScape. Okay, so this is just a U log guide. All it requires is level 60 or higher wood cutting. I figure it's pretty straightforward. Mitch's first YouTube video was extremely basic simply showing people where they could cut logs in RuneScape on a map. And I'm just going to show you guys some simple locations. Since cutting a tree, all you need is an axe. I don't really have to explain much. After posting this first video, Mitch got the bug for content creation and decided to continue posting RuneScape videos on the Awesome Source Films channel. Alright, so you choose plank running, and I'm going to show you the ways of how to run a plank. As time progressed, the quality of the videos steadily increased. And as the quality of the videos increased, Mitch started to get more views. But there was an issue here. Mitch was getting bored of playing RuneScape. He wanted to try other games, but unfortunately didn't have access to them. Just mm -hmm. at that point in my life, I didn't really have access to video games besides RuneScape. That was the only right. one. But this problem didn't last very long because in January 2011, Mitch would feature in his first highly successful series on the channel titled Black Ops Zombies Quest for Round 50. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch Orbage and Canadian from Awesome Sauce Films, and I am here with None hey guys, other. what's going on? It's Matt or Ducham, and I'm here with Bajan Canadian from Awesome Sauce Films, and uh... In this series, Mitch and another person from the channel, Matt, spent around five hours trying to get to wave 50 in Black Ops Zombies. I'm gonna estimate we're gonna be going at this for the next five hours. <laughs> three hours, you know? <laughs> at least three to five that's, hours. That's where it's at. The content was highly relatable, as you could feel the energy slowly depleting over time. Something that would happen to anyone playing for this long. I don't want Let's this go. to end. This abstractly showed everyone that these YouTubers who everyone looked up to were just normal people who also got tired and just liked to play zombies in their spare time like everyone else. This series as a whole boosted the reputation of Mitch, and since it was so popular, Mitch continued to make more series type videos on the channel. Mitch's reputation was boosted so much that he decided to get his personal Beijing Canadian channel up and running. Posting his first ever video in April 2011, only three months after blowing up from the zombie series. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch or Beijing Canadian. And today I've decided to do my gaming setup video first video ever on the Beijing Canadian Mitch continued to post videos on awesome source films But likely started posting on his personal channel in order to have his own branding and channel control This fact could also be supported by the fact that other members of awesome source films such as Jerome ASF were also starting personal channels at the same time after posting his first video, Mitch continued his personal channel by posting similar series videos that were popular on Awesome Source Films, such as Zoo Tycoon. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch or Bajan Canadian. And what's this? This is Zoo Tycoon 2, people. And Family Zoo. This is the very first episode of the Family Zoo. However, the problem was these games weren't super popular at the time. What Mitch needed was a game that was rising in popularity, a game that he could really grow a large fan base around. 
Could there possibly be any game that might fit this category? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's go back a few steps here. Beijing Canadian already had 7,500 subscribers on the new channel stemming from his awesome source film's fame. This number quickly increased to 20,000 only one month later when everyone began to realize that he was uploading content on his own channel. His subscribers steadily increased from here for three main reasons. Firstly, people knew Mitch from awesome source films and were steadily migrating over. I am migrating much of my content to my other channel, The Beijing Canadian. Secondly, Mitch was pumping out an insane amount of content, giving him ample opportunity for growth. I can guarantee you that there'll be one video a day on this, the Beijing Canadian channel, at least. And thirdly, people were subscribing as they loved his new Minecraft series. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch, or Beijing Canadian, and on my other channel, the Beijing Canadian, I just uploaded a video earlier today discussing my new Minecraft series that will be hosted on that channel. Beijing Canadian had begun playing Minecraft in October 2010 alongside Jerome when they were running Awesome Source films together. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch or Beige and Canadian and uh, I know you guys have been awaiting my first Minecraft video. And since the game was becoming one of the most popular games at the time, it only made sense for Beige and Canadian to start playing it regularly on the new channel. I am a gangster right now on my screen. I'm a straight up G. Mitch began by posting a few fairly innocuous videos on the game, most of which displayed basic gameplay where many standard buildings were constructed. However, this would change in April 2012 when Mitch uploaded a video titled Minecraft, the Hunger Games multiplayer with Mitch and friends. Alright, and guys, what we are doing today is we are doing Minecraft The Hunger Games. This video would become a series where Beijing Canadian would play a Battle Royale style Minecraft game an almost unknown style at the time. And the reason that the top comment says this is where it all started was because this is the series that would go on to boost Beijing Canadian into stardom. But before we talk about that, let's briefly discuss the reputation of Beijing Canadian. The Beijing Canadian channel began to grow a reputation for showcasing various different Minecraft minigames. Death Run, like mm. they said, which is basically a minigame in which one person becomes the invisible spooky man who tries to kill everyone. This slowly established his channel as a place to visit for viewers wanting to get the scoop on a mini game that they might be able to test out for themselves. All right, so basically, mix up some mini game where you gotta match the color here and jump on the platform quick, get on orange. It's often discussed in a YouTube context that the way to succeed is to do something different or slide into a specific niche. And this was his niche, showcasing mini games. This niche caused Beijing Canadian to hit 50,000 subscribers only one year and one month after his first video, which was accompanied by a video thanking everyone for the milestone. Uh, guys, serious news, 50,000 subscribers here on the Beijing Canadian, which is incredible. Mitch finished the video by saying that he plans on sticking around for the long haul. And welcome all my new subscribers. I, I hope you will stick around for the long haul because I'm going to be doing this for quite a while. This showed his fan base that he planned on continuing the uploads and that he had the confidence and hunger for growing the channel. This confidence and hunger caused Beijing Canadian to hit 100,000 subscribers only six months later in December 2012. I just want to once again thank you all for the support. It really does mean a lot to see you uh, having my back and enjoying the videos and uh, and I guess showing such through the, the ratings and the comments. Which was followed by 300,000 subscribers only four months later in April 2013. 300,000 subscribers, that is insane. It seems as though from this point, things just totally took off for the Beijing Canadian channel, sending the subscriber graph into the stratosphere. We've gone from growing at like 150 subs a day to 700 new subscribers a day. So every day, I get to welcome 700 new beautiful faces. Every Hunger Games video was getting hundreds of thousands of views. Every new series and video was welcomed with open arms by his extensive fan base. Things were exploding in popularity and Mitch just didn't know what was going on. Because in the last three days, I was on vacation. I went snowboarding with my friends. And uh, I came back and 10,000 subscribers later in three days. This growth continued at an insane level throughout 2013, going from 300,000 subscribers in April to 2.5 million only nine months later in December 2013. But this was only the beginning. After hitting 2.5 million subscribers, a video was uploaded that would absolutely explode the growth for the Beijing Canadian channel even further. Mitch uploaded the video Hunger Games Beijing Canadian Song on the 17th of December 2013, which to this day has over 100 million views. The video was a parody of the song Decisions by Borgor and Miley Cyrus, and was done in a similar style to many of the other Minecraft parodies that were blowing up at the time. The most interesting part about this is that the original song only had 25 million views, 
views, about one quarter of Mitch's views, a possible indication that Beijing Canadian had more influence than some of the top Hollywood music artists at the time. Mitch's channel was going so well that he bought a new house with the money he had earned from the channel. Oh yeah, that's the view of the pool. I'm sure some, some of you have seen this on Instagram and Twitter and stuff because I love posting photos of it. Mitch had Jerome and other prominent YouTubers at the time, such as Lachlan, move into the house as a kind of streamer house before streamer houses were a popular thing to do. Mitch later revealed that the house was totally falling apart and that he got screwed over in the purchase. It was genuinely falling apart. Long story short, that house I had had it for six months before the first issue appeared, and it was under renovation for three years of living in it. <laughs> so it was under renovation longer than it wasn't. So that was exciting. However, all that mattered at the time was that the boys were together pumping out content, a scenario that would grow everyone's popularity and reputation together. In January 2014, the channel hit yet another view peak getting 68 million views for the month. However, this month was iconic as it was the final month before a steady decline would begin for Beijing Canadian. 2014 was a very good year for Beijing Canadian, ending the year with a total of 605 million views. His peak views at 68 million were in January, which dropped a little bit by the end of the year to 51 million, which was still a very decent number. However, this is where things started to go properly sour. From January 2015, Beijing Canadian started to lose around 25% of his audience every three months. Beijing Canadian went from 51 million views in January 2015 to 40 million views in March 2015. Despite being a drop of only 10 million, things would continue to decline from here. By June 2015, Beijing Canadian was only getting 30 million views a month. Then at the end of the year, only 20 million views per month. 2015 ended with a total of 400 million views, a drop of almost 35%. In July 2015, it became apparent that Beijing Canadian was starting to get worried about his drop in views. He started to ask his audience about what he could do to win them back. You know, 15,000 likes on a video was no problem. I wanna get back to that. So I'm gonna work really hard on my end and I wanna ask all of you to please do the same and let me know what I can do to uh, get you excited again. Now that's a fair enough question on the surface, but on a deeper level, it's not a question that will show the audience that you have a whole lot of confidence in yourself. It also gave off the indication that Mitch wasn't really grateful for what he had. Subconsciously saying, yeah, 40 million views a month is decent, but why can't we go back to when I was getting 60 million? As the views started to decline, Mitch should have just focused on posting what he wanted to post as well as what he expected the viewers to want to watch, not ask them what he needs to post for them to come back. However, Mitch just continued to post various things displaying his lack of confidence in the channel, ultimately resulting in a decreased viewership. Yeah, so pass this along to anyone that you know that used to be a big fan and maybe has lost their love and, and hopefully, hopefully I can try to win them back because that's really all I wanna do. This decreased viewership continued from 2015 into 2016, a year in which the drop in views would continue further. It was apparent by this point that the most likely reasoning behind the decline was a slow drop in interest and confidence as well as a possible reduction in upload frequency. I have an upload loaded in three days and it feels really bad and I apologize for that things just didn't go my way that's why I, I didn't have videos for well I mean I still had videos but I had less videos for about a week there and I, I do apologize for that I know my videos have been sort of hit or miss the last little while there haven't been too too many of them I have not been posting as many videos as I normally should um, I had a bit of uh, a cold as well, which is never fun to record with. This was also likely a positive feedback loop. The lower views led to lower motivation and fewer uploads, then fewer uploads led to lower overall views and motivation. Kind of like a double negative against Beijing Canadian. Then in October 2016, after a sharp decline since the month of July, the My Channel Is Dead video was uploaded which as explained in the beginning, outlined the fact that his channel was losing viewership. I'm doing this video now after months and months of letting my personal thoughts build up and stress me out just a little bit too much. So I figured I would rant a little bit to my audience, explain really what's going on and let you know that I'm also unsatisfied with the direction things are moving right now. But again, just like the previous videos in 2015 where we discussed the lower viewership, the whole video just kind of reeked of a lack of confidence and wasn't really a very good look for Mitch. And as would be expected, the My Channel Is Dead video once again failed to revive his audience, considering the views would only continue to decline from there. But I guess it wasn't all bad for Mitch, because the Beijing Canadian channel hit 6 million subscribers in July 2017, exactly two years after hitting 5 million, at which point he uploaded a video for the milestone. 
Welcome aboard to a very special video. This is my 6 million subscriber thank you vlog. I just want to give a massive shout out to each and every single one of my 6 million fans who have tuned in and supported me over the years. However, the issue was this video was somewhat indicative of Beijing Canadians dropping motivation and confidence for the channel, since 50% of the video was just begging the remaining audience to buy his merch and follow his socials. Join me on my Discord server. The link is on screen and in the video details. There's also a link to to a straw poll. Go ahead. I've also got some links down below to my t-shirts that just came out. You can find those down below. All I can do at this point is shamelessly plug myself. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. You don't my hoodies, they look a lot like this guy. You see what he's wearing right here? You can get yourself one of those as well. They're on sale. Make sure you and drop me a comment and subscribe. I'm only giving them out to subscribers. I'm only giving them out to real By the way, fans. if you want to win one of these little guys, one of these little cool, cute collectibles of, of, of my character on a little foamy, also leave a comment, smash that like button, subscribe. As well as a clearly sure? inflated fake level of confidence in an attempt to show the audience that things weren't really as bad as the stats were portraying. However, what Mitch said didn't really matter because the data was speaking for itself. By July 2017, when the video was posted, Mitch's views had tanked pretty heavily to around 10 million per month. Now 10 million per month is still pretty reasonable. However, this number wasn't enough to sustain a growing subscriber count. Mitch's subscribers plateaued at 6 million and then began to regress back into the 5 millions where they remain to this day. Then, since that point in time, the Beijing Canadian channel has lost subscribers for 26 out of 36 months in the last three years of data. A statistic that's also been accompanied by a steady decline in views every month for the last three years. Beijing Canadian currently averages around 1 million views every month, which has been consistent for the last 12 months. Quite a drop from his 60 million per month back in 2014. So I guess it creates the closing question. What caused the downfall of the Beijing Canadian channel? Well, not that you really care about my opinion, but I think that it was owed to Mitch's total drop in confidence back in 2015. It's not really like his views had dropped that much. Going from 60 million to 40 million per month is a fairly standard view fluctuation on YouTube. However, when it happened, he showed his weakness. He showed that he cared about how many views he actually got. He showed that he cared more about the views than the quality of the content. And by openly displaying that you don't have any confidence in your own channel, what makes you think that the audience is going to have any confidence in you? Regardless, it's nice to see that these days Mitch is still able to have a bit of a laugh about the decline of his viewership. Things are rough right now on the channel, guys. <laughs> Protein powder? Subscribe! And it's safe to say that over his 11 years on YouTube, it's certainly been a net positive to the website, likely even inspiring many. So then let's finish this video on a positive note. Thank you to Mitch for all the entertainment you've provided to us over the years. From Nazi zombies to vlogs to Minecraft, you've certainly done a lot for us all.